names are the country companies and they're more than 900 agents throughout illinois you've got the country behind you john deere and your local john deere dealer and the illinois pork producers association the 10,000 pork producers in illinois encourage you to try new lean nutritious pork the other white meat we're back live at the assembly hall in champaign urbana and it's that special time of year time for march madness as we present the 1989 boys class double a state basketball championship good evening everybody i'm frank Bassoni, and happy st patrick's day welcome back to this historic tournament this afternoon, two superb teams, Chicago King and East St. Louis Lincoln, won and joined tomorrow's semifinals. And tonight, two more. Two more will go to the final four. In our second quarterfinal session, Chicago Heights Bloom tries to stop the great run of unbeaten Peoria Central, 30-0. and 0. And then the collision between the Rocks of Rock Island, 26-4, and 4, and the Trevians of Nutrier, 22-8. Now with more on tonight's session, here's Jim Albrecht and Coach Mel Rustio. Thanks a lot, Frank, and good evening once again, everyone. Our second round of quarterfinal games. You know, Coach, no class AA team has gone through a season and taken the championship in AA since 1981 when Jerry Leggett's Quincy Blue Devils have done it. Now Chuck Bursar is trying to do that with Peoria Central, and Lord knows defensively they have the tools to get it done. Well, they really do, and they've got two outstanding offensive basketball players in Michael Hughes and Chris Reynolds. Both of them are... are Parade All-American uh, ball players, and they're just outstanding, and I can attest to that from my uh, personal experience last Tuesday night. That would be in the super section right. when Jacksonville lost to Peoria Central. If indeed there is a Cinderella in this tournament, it would be Chicago Heights Bloom. When the season ended, they were 14 and 10. They've reeled off five in a row. Suddenly, they're in the Elite Eight, and the man who brought them here is named Brandon Cole. Another young man, a junior. This, uh, this tournament is just loaded with outstanding junior basketball players, and we're eagerly awaiting to see the skills that Brandon Cole brings on the Assembly Hall floor. Well, Chicago King is in. East St. Louis Lincoln in, is in in a thriller. We'll see who else joins the final four. But first, let us pause for these messages. Frank Nardi is the coach of Chicago Heights Bloom, and we were just talking about a Cinderella year. I don't think you may be expected to be here when the season ended as far as the regular season is concerned. No, we really didn't expect it to be here, you know, when we first started in November and December. But we did put together a winning streak in January sometime. And then when I saw the pairings of the regional and the sectional and the super sectional, I told the kids at that time that I felt if we could play ball, we could be down here. Well, it's all in the believing a lot of times, and a lot of people believe that Brandon Cole can hit from just about anywhere with just about any kind of defense on him. Well, we've seen all kinds of defenses all year. Brandon has just had an exceptional year, but my other kids now are really helping out the best they can. They are not blessed with a lot of ability, but they've given me everything they've had. Those abilities will be severely tested tonight by Peoria Central, a team that comes out, tries to grab you by the juggler with the defense. Well, I know that, but we were in Sick of East, and we've played a lot of tough ball clubs. And uh, as long as Brandon Cole's on the floor, we have a shot at him. Now, against the kind of pressure you're going to see tonight, patience is obviously the key. We try to spread it out. Is that the key? How do you break your press? Well, so much depends on what they're going to do with Brandon. Whatever they do to Brandon, then we react to that. If it's a box, we have an offense for that. If it's a regular man-to-man, -man, we have a lot of motion, and we have a lot of screening for Brandon. It probably took you a couple of days just to get over that super section win. I know that was a sweater. Yeah, it really was. And Joliet Centro had a nice, nice ball club. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate to come out on top. And uh, it was another case of Brandon having a good game, but my other kids contributing after he fouled out with 15 seconds to go in the game, what seemed like an hour. <laughs> Let me ask you, did you see any of the games this afternoon during the quarterfinal round? We saw the first game, King against Thornridge, and we only saw one quarter of the uh, St. Louis Aurora ball game. And Chicago King is, how do you spell tough? Yeah, King is very tough. Uh, Thornridge and early. Thornridge just did not play a good ball game. You have to attribute a little bit of that to what King did to him and some cold shooting on the part of Thornridge. 
Well, Coach, I know your game plan is intact. The thing you want to do is not get behind too early because you're, you're not a catch-up kind of team, are you? Oh, yeah, we can move the ball. We can put up. As long as you got Brandon on the floor shooting the three-pointers, we can play either way. We can speed it up or we can slow it down. Well, if you have to catch up, good luck to you, sir. Thanks a lot. That is Coach Frank Nardi of Chicago Bloom, and now checking in will be Chuck Fisher of Peoria Central. Chuck, good evening to you, sir. Thanks very much. Chuck has an undefeated team. He knows that, but right now, 30 wins mean nothing at all. It's a one-day-at-a-time season. You have made the quote that coaching really isn't as important down here. Coaching maybe helps you get here, but uh, when you're down here, the kids may be down at the other end of the floor, and it seems like a mile away. I believe that. <laughs> it seems like, anyway, compared to a high school gym. Uh, I think now your players have played 30 games, and they better be used to everything, uh, defensively and, and offensively. And we just uh, you know, got to try to stay within ourselves, and Hope they're ready to do that. Chuck, everybody talks about Chris Reynolds and Mike Hughes. You've got more than that, but talk about those two gentlemen first. Well, we think we do. And Reynolds and Hughes are outstanding players. Chris is one of the better point guards in the country. A very competitive young man, an excellent defensive player, and loves to win. And Michael Hughes is gifted. Uh, a lot of offensive skills, can shoot the basketball. So, you know, we feel good about that, but we have a few others that can play a little bit, too. To teach the kind of defense you do, you got to get a little nasty at practice sometimes, don't you? It's a good nasty, though. Yeah, I think so. We, we get after pretty good. And it's one of the things Reynolds and, and all of our seniors give us is they've been there for three or four years now. They're highly competitive, and they, they practice pretty hard. Chuck, good luck to you. Thanks a lot. That's the head coach of Peoria Central. Let's go back to Frank Bassoni. Thank you very much, Jim. And we're set for our second quarterfinal session. Peoria Central, of course, in Peoria County. In the Mid-State 9, there's your comparisons of the teams, field goals and attempts. You're seeing the percentages, the free throws, and down the line with the rebounding. Some of the percentages pretty even. Peoria's record, a gaudy 30-0, and, and top-ranked uh, now in the field left here at the Assembly Hall. We're set for the presentation of the colors, and for that, the public address announcer, Steve Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, after the presentation of the colors, we ask you to stand and join soloist Bill Olson of the University of Illinois and sing our national anthem as it is played this evening by the pep band from Belleville East High School. around this great state of Illinois. Welcome to the IHSA Boys AA Basketball Tournament. Earlier today, in case you missed, King was a winner and advanced to the semifinals, and so did the defending two-time champion, East St. Louis Lincoln. We're set now for our third quarterfinal game. Let's meet the players. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the coaches and players for tonight's third quarterfinal game featuring the Peoria Central Lions and the Trojans of Chicago Heights Bloom. First, for the Lions of Peoria Central High School, entering this game with a record of 30 wins and no losses. Here is the head coach in his 10th season with a record of 190 wins and 88 losses, Chuck Fisher. Assistant coaches, John Long, Bob Darling, and Mike Plunkett. And now the players. Number 10, a 5'6 sophomore, Lamont Thomas. Number 11, 
a 5'11 sophomore, John Seckler. Number 21, a 5'10 sophomore, Marcus Albert. Number 24, a six-foot sophomore, Tremaine Coleman. Number 25, a six, five and a half junior, Cartney Saison. Number 31, a six, three junior, Anthony Cotton. And number 55, a six foot senior, Larry Burnett. And now, the starting lineup for Peoria Central at one forward, a six one senior, number 14, Charles White. At the other forward, a 6'3 senior, 44, Tyrone Howard. At center, a 6'6 senior, 34, Mike Hughes. At one guard, a 5'10 sophomore, number 15, Mike Kirksey. And at the other guard, a 6'1 senior, number 20, Chris Reynolds. Those are the Lions of Peoria Central High School. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Trojans of Bloom Township High School of Chicago Heights, entering this game with a record of 19 and 10. Here is the head coach in his seventh season with a record of 106 and 80, Frank Nardi. Assistant coaches, Bob Eskew and Preston Bowler. And now the players. Number 14, a six-foot sophomore, Mark Washington. Number 20, a 6'2 freshman, Ron Lawton. Number 24, a 6'4 junior, Dana Parker. Number 25, a six-foot senior, Charles Matthews. Number 30, a six-foot junior, Maurice Aldridge. Number 43, a six-foot junior, Maurice James. And number 50, a 6'4 freshman, Josh Dable. And now the starting lineup. At one forward, a six-foot sophomore, number 22, Jeff Daniel. At the other forward, a six-foot senior, 54, Alcinder Turner. At center, a 6'2 senior, 33, Derek Stewart. At one guard, a 5'9 senior, number 15, Patrick Herbert. And at the other guard, a 6'1 junior, number 23, Brandon Cole. Those are the Trojans of Bloom of Chicago Heights. And now let's meet the officials, Willie Jackson of North Chicago and Jim Lapatina of Edison. The stage is set, and Brandon Cole, the leading scorer in the state in double-A competition. Peoria's Lions, the maroon and black of the mid-state nine, the smallest team in the field with the enrollment just under 1,200, a perfect record on the season. The Trojans of Chicago Heights Bloom, 19 and 10, 2037, the blue and white from the Sika East Conference. Their sixth double-A appearance, their tenth appearance overall. The Lions, their sixth double-A appearance and their 21st appearance overall. And this team is, was the first state champion in the 81-year history, and they hope to be the 14th unbeaten champion. Yes, that'd be it. And you know, uh, whereas Pure Summer may be the smallest in terms of enrollment, I believe that it, without question, Chicago Heights Bloom is the smallest uh, in terms of a lineup that takes the floor. Yes, it is, with Derek Stewart at 6'2", their tallest player. The key performers to watch, Brandon Cole, 23 in the white for the Trojans. 20, Chris Reynolds, 34, Mike Hughes, the All-American from Parade Magazine's poll for the Peoria Central Lions. The Lions turned down Mel Rustio's Jacksonville Club to get here. The Trojans edged Joliet Central by one in the Super. And folks are in for a treat if Michael Hughes is on because he's an incredible shooter. The ball starts with Mike Kirksey and the Lions. Reynolds runs the point. 
he will attend Indiana. Man-to-man. -man. Reynolds picks it up and shoots. Reynolds again. Athletic ability of Chris Reynolds. Picked up a loose ball, a bad pass from, uh, from Michael Hughes, and uh, made, a, made an attempt at a shot and got his own rebound scored. Patrick Herbert off to Brandon Cole, a three. Cole will shoot plenty of those. Rebound in the lane. Tyrone Howard, the Lions run. Kirksey on the right wing. Michael Hughes, yes. He doesn't need much daylight, Frank. He just can't give him that kind of shooting room. Central comes out of the blocks, 4-0. The Trojans have Jeff Daniel, a sophomore, 22 at one forward. Brandon Cole on the scoop. Cole fouled by Charles White. Great quickness, uh, head fake by Brandon Cole out on the wing, and he took the ball on the baseline, just blew by Michael Hughes. Brandon Cole will shoot a pair. What an active player he is. He can shoot from anywhere on the court. Well, he showed you his versatility there. You know, he, he faked the, uh, just the jump shot from outside and, and just burned the guy on the baseline. He's led his team in scoring every game. You know, you and I talked about this before, Frank, but uh, Chuck Fisher plays his card pretty intelligently here. He knows he's not real deep on his bench. He comes out with pretty good pressure, defensively speaking, but he turns it up a notch the second half if he's not in foul trouble. Cole missed. And central rebounds. Peoria High. In the lead, 4-1. Reynolds between the legs. Nice play by Cole. Brandon Cole's ahead of the pack for the deuce. Frank, this is the second triangle and two defense we've seen today. Thornridge attempted it earlier today on uh, King, and now here we have uh, Bloom coming out in a triangle and two. They got man-to-man -man coverage on Chris Reynolds and Michael Hughes. Herbert goes against Reynolds. That's Hughes. He eyes it and doesn't. Kirksey won't shoot a lot. He's helped stabilize their defense, particularly their press. Howard at the high post and a whistle. Foul on the Trojans. That time up the floor, uh, Bloom uh, switched off, went to a straight man-to-man -man defense, so it looks like they're going to mix defenses between the triangle and the straight man. Bloom looks like they want you to get the shot off in a hurry. There's the zone out of bounds. Central kicks it in. Watch White. Charles White rings the bell. Now he'll roam the baseline for the lob, too. Yeah, he's got, he's got incredible jumping ability, and he's a good outside shooter. Daniel in the back with Cole. Cole double team gets free. Herbert tries Alcinder Turner for two. Turner's a strong jumper, took the ball to the hole right now. In a two-point game, the Lions push it. Kirksey comes in the lane, traveling. Good call. I think you're right. I think Bloom uh, likes the up-tempo game. Of course, Peoria Central can play that. They've got great athletes. They can move it up and down. Derek Stewart is Bloom's center, but he's back in the back, helping against the pressure. Look at Tyrone Howard play the point. Still in backcourt, Herbert. Comes all the way down, gets to the baseline to Turner. Crossover. Turner used the basket very well to, to shield Michael Hughes' defensive effort off. Game tied at seven. And Reynolds is held. Reynolds is simply a ground-to-ground -ground rocket. Peoria Central will use a deny type of uh, pressing activity. Oh. Looking here, pushing the ball up the floor. Kind of a kind of a ticky foul here on uh, on Bloom, Bloom High School. One of the few guys you'll see pass up people dribbling the ball on the fly is Reynolds. Michael Hughes. Rebound inside Kirksey. The foul on a Trojan. Strike it's on Derek Stewart. Start to pick up Central's uh, defensive attitude. They'll they'll deny you the ball inbounds a little bit. Fouls on Cole. Fouls on Cole here. Just a case of being in the right place at the right time. Kirksey 5'10 and a sophomore. Not a terribly good free throw shooter at 
but Kirksey is in there because he really helps this team's pressure defense. One of two. The Lions lead by one. Here's the denied pressing situation. Now they usually slip into a 1-2-2 defense. Reynolds puts the pressure on Herbert, man-to-man. Man-to-man -man this time. Reynolds can put some heat on Frank. Charles White has the Brandon Cole assignment. Turner baseline traveled. Little skip step to try to get loose. Turner posts up pretty well. He, uh, he pretends he's uh, 6'11". He's he, not that big. He doesn't pretend to be 190, though. <laughs> no, he's that. Every bit of that. <laughs> Five minutes to play in the opening quarter. Reynolds drops it down to Hughes. He'll shoot that. Great one-on-one -on -one ball player. You, you isolate him one-on-one -on -one against a man-to-man -man defense as it was that time, and he's even double teamed. He's able to score. Hughes averages 21 a game, and he is a long-range shooter as well as in tight. Cole is two. He fires a three. Yes, sir. Kid's got a great release. Super release. He is quick on the trigger. It's a tie. Hughes answers. Short. Turner rebounds. The Trojans with the ball in white. Up tempo it. Baseline Daniel. Frank Nardi told our colleague that they could up tempo. Tyrone Howard tracks this down and he's double teamed. Bloom's flying all around the court and they're in the lead. Hughes, ball fake. Step in, puts it up and in. you got to have some help on Hughes inside. He's just too much for any one person on uh, Chicago Heights Blooms ball club to, to take one-on-one -on -one inside. We're going to have to have some help on him. Hughes is 6'6 six, six and 190. He has not decided on where he'll play college basketball yet. Beauty about him, Frank, is, of course, we had an attitude of a zone defense against him on Tuesday night in the Super, and Hughes went outside and killed us. He has three-point range without question. The game is tied at three, and look at Daniel push it up. Under four minutes to go, first quarter. Chicago Heights Bloom in a tie with the Lions of Peoria Central trying to protect an unbeaten season. Herbert, 5'9", senior, and he's called for traveling. Peoria That's the Central's, third walk. Peoria Central's changed their defense now. Played last couple trips down the floor going straight man-to-man -man against the, uh, the Trojans. Lions like a 3-2 zone, but they really like man-to-man -man pressure. Here's a zone by Blue. Zone. Might be matching up out of this. Tyrone Howard's on the wing there. Kind of a 1-3-1. One, one. Trying to get some help down on the block when Hughes is there. There's Hughes in a three-point position. That's the beauty of Michael Hughes, inside-outside. He was on the line for a deuce, and the Lions lead by two. Hughes off early. Eight points from Mike Hughes. Out of the Lions, 14. Look at Cole, fake and pop. Zing. Cole went back to the baseline right now as soon as he saw the 3-2 zone defense that uh, the Lions had switched off to. Eight for Cole. So Hughes and Cole in a shootout at eight. The game is tied. Reynolds blows by his man for a layup. Saw the opening in the seam, took advantage of it right now. Four for Reynolds. And he can flat fly. Outside, Cole, yes! He may be the best three-point shooter here, folks. Light it up. Brandon Cole puts Bloom in the lead by one. And as Nardi said, the coach of Bloom, whenever we have him, we have a chance. Inside, nice catch by White, blocked by Bloom. Bloom ball club plays a little bit bigger than they are, Frank. Now there's a timeout on the court. 2.28 to play in the first quarter. We've got a one-point game. Now this, from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. Madame? I'll have the chicken divan. Oh, oui. But make it with pork. Huh? The tetrazzini, but with pork. <coughs> so come on. So almondine, and with pork. Pork, pork, pork. Uh, chicken Kiev, but with pork. Oui, monsieur. I'd like some fried chicken. Oui, madame. Fried pork. You can do almost anything with pork. Pork, the other white meat. They're working over the nets at the assembly hall in the early part of this one. Yeah, you got the inside, a lot of contact inside. Lost control of the ball. Of course, they wanted the travel call. Bloom did. And then the inside, ass down low. 
bang around pretty good in here, fellas. Ball's out of bounds at Peoria Central. Part of the house. Watching this, as you see the wave and the field goals. Look at Bloom, seven of eight. That includes 11 points for Cole. The Lions, seven of 11, and they're 24 percentage points down in shooting. Chris Reynolds down the lane. Reynolds turned the afterburners on again on the move. That'll be interesting one to see in replay there. Okay, here comes Reynolds splitting down the lane. Let's see if he's set here. Mm. Mm. Look at the other angle here. See if he's set. See if... There no, he's still Stewart moving. Didn't Good call. Quite get Good there. call. Didn't get there. Chris Reynolds sat out 17 days in three games with a separated shoulder. That was a serious injury. Very serious. It's, it's amazing he's responding so well. And he puts down a pair. The Lions reclaim the lead by one. We've had a sizzling first quarter, largely because of the shooting of Brandon Cole. Patrick Herbert out between the rings. There's Cole. Look how quick he is. He traveled that time. Very quick with the basketball. And, and uh, of course, Peoria Central knows they have to have a hand in his face because if he's got daylight, he's really going to dial it. Now the Trojans have three turnovers. The Lions with two. And the Trojans put on the press. Not bad when you consider the pace of this ball game, Frank. This pace is a little bit reminiscent of the East St. Louis Lincoln exactly. Aurora East game, which ended at the buzzer in favor of Lincoln, 72-70. Chuck Fisher is going to a one-four set down low, trying to uh, trying to take advantage of his size inside with some backdoor cutting against the uh, smaller uh, Bloom Ball Club. When you say size, the man taking it out, Charles White, only six-one, but he plays like six-five with his jumping ability. Hughes on the move. One forty-five to play, first quarter. Inside, pass too hard. Brandon Cole. Flying 360. Aside from being an incredible three-point shooter, he, he shows you that he can really go with the ball on the open floor. Here he is, and he's going to put a tremendous spin move on. He just loses another defender and goes up, and now he gets raked in here. I don't know. Maybe that guy got all ball. Looked pretty good there in the replay. He just explodes with oh. the ball. Just great quickness. Cole is 6'1", 150. He's a junior. I'm not good at remembering uh, previous years and classes down here, but uh, I, I uh, would be hard pressed to come up with a year when you had so many great junior basketball players in the state final. Central gets 25. Cartney Saison, a 6'5 and a half junior in the game, and Charles White comes out. Chuck, Cole, Chuck Cole has been pleased with uh, Saison's uh, play of late, coming on and doing a little rest in there for some of his kids. He's valuable because he does give him a little more depth. A minute 37 seconds, Bloom by one. Bloom's played very well. Hughes comes up on the court. Turner comes out to get it. Bloom switches this time to a man to man. Chris Reynolds. He's free. Stop and pop. Hughes rebounds and scores. Bloom's really putting the heat on in the man-to-man. -man. Of course, Reynolds found himself open. But again, uh, Michael Hughes, a uh, man with all kinds of trades to him. He, he can go inside, outside, and he went to the board. Reynolds with a steal. Reynolds, three on two, central. Chris all the way. Rebound, Cole. The other way to Alcinder Turner. It's a layup. Bloom takes the lead back with six points by Turner. 21 to 20. High scoring, anyone? <laughs> they, they picked up the pace from the last ball game here. They must have seen a little of that on TV. There's your first quarter clock dwindling down. Fury Central does this well. Spread the floor, four corners. Blocked by Jeff Daniel, the sophomore, got the Chris Reynolds shot. Now the clock's 25 seconds. Tyrone Howard finds Courtney Saison. And Herbert's got the ball with 19 I don't seconds. Think Chuck wanted that. 
Herbert comes all the way down to Daniel and a whistle. I don't think Coach Fisher is happy with that. He wanted to spread the floor with 30 seconds left and probably get the last shot. Reynolds forced it a little bit. It may have been fouled, but his shot was blocked. And now you got uh, you got Bloom in a situation to uh, extend their lead here before the uh, quarter break. Foul's called on Mike Kirksey, his first. There's Chuck Bisher, graduate of Bradley. Class of 67. There's a whistle away and a foul against a Jeff holding Daniel. Foul. Yeah, a little, little holding on his pick. I think he was eager to, uh, to free up Cole. Eager is a word to describe both teams in this early part. Look at Frank Nardi. He's on Jeff Daniel. You know, Brandon Cole's not on every All-State team, and uh, leaving him after you see him off an All-State team is like leaving Diana Ross off an All-Supreme team. And what's, uh, what's unfortunate about that, probably because his ball club was 14 and 10 sure. going into the regional tournament, he just hadn't had the publicity. Chris Reynolds. Game tied at 21. 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. You know, Cole has faced the box and won 18 times, according to his coach, and he's still averaging 31 points a game. He's got a foul over the back, his zone. Excellent box out move by Turner underneath on the rebound. Just excellent. Turner uses that body to yes, big advantage. Does. Yes, he does. You know, the uh, Adrian Dantleys of the world aren't the tallest people either, but they get down on those blocks with that big body. You, you know, you got you got a technique if down inside if you're not very big. And Turner can use his body. Let's see if Bloom goes for one, and if they go to Brandon Cole. Ten seconds, first quarter. Herbert. There's Cole with five. Cole flies past the lane. Central picks up the ball. Two seconds. One second. Kirksey, it'll count if it goes. It doesn't. I believe Cole may have been bumped there right on his penetration. At the end of one at the Assembly Hall, Bloom and Central tied at 21. Let's take time out for one of your network sponsors, Country Company. At the end of one quarter, lots of shooting and lots of pressing. Into the end of the first quarter, here's Brandon Cole trying to go one on the world, and he's capable of doing it, folks. He comes inside. Looks like he's tripped right in here. Rake maybe a little bit on the arm. Sure he is. Yep. And the official didn't see it. He couldn't get the shot off, and of course, Fury got the desperation shot off. Nice reaction yeah. by Cole with the outstretched arm and hand. Well, eight minutes of action produce a 21 all count. Look at the shooting. Now, that's incredible shooting by Bloom, and uh, you know, you got to ask yourself a question uh, can a team shoot like that all night, and do they need to to stay with Peoria Central? And, uh, we're going to find out in the next three quarters. You don't know whether to be happy or sad if you shot 89%, and you're tied. I guess happy. Looks like the Lions have uh, gone to man-to-man -man here. Nope. I packed it into their zone defense. 3-2. Outside shot is nicely done. Daniel got it down. Blue takes a two-point lead, and they're now 9 out of 10. And, of course, they're back in their man-to-man -man defense. They went to that about midway through the first quarter. Not usual for... Charles White to be out of the game long for the Lions. Here's a steal by Cole. He's got the ball two on two. He pulls up. Mike Hughes covers up on the rebound. Right, he, he can get up, can he? Tyrone Howard to the left. Cole and Reynolds really quick. Here's Reynolds. He's got it. Count it. And a blocking, blocking foul. Give and go with the emphasis on go. Check it out here. Chris Reynolds gets a return pass right here on a backdoor cut. And as he comes in, the defender just isn't there in time. He has a great concentration, Reynolds does. He gets the ball to go, and he's on the line trying to convert it. Jeff Daniel, the sophomore, picked up the foul. He had a big game in the Super with 14 points. Reynolds missed. Derek Stewart pulled it down. The game is tied, and there's seven minutes to go in the first half. And here's Brandon Cole, and as soon as he crosses half court, he's close enough. <laughs> Daniel steps in the scene, and Reynolds rebounds. Releases is Howard. 
Howard baseline Hughes. Yes, Great sir. Great spin move by Howard to find Hughes open underneath on the baseline. A dozen for Mike Hughes. Peoria Central with the lead by two. Cole goes by his man on the right. Derek Stewart sets one post. Now he exchanges downstairs. And the shot is down by Jeff Daniel. Daniels has answered now twice to, uh, here, two times in a row with his offense. They're cheating out a little bit on Brandon Cole, trying to cover his jumper. You're tempted to guard him with everybody you have. Here's a lob inside to Hughes. Bloom gets it. Peoria gets it back. Reynolds with a shot outside. Rebound inside. Step in for Tyrone Howard. I pick up Howard here on the top of their press. Herbert sends it up. Tipping on the rebound. Stewart's got it. Back to Herbert. Rebound inside Daniel. Boy, Dana Parker went after that one. You know, Bloom does play taller. Dana Parker at 6'4", got off the bench. He's their tallest man. But they uh, are playing well with Central on the board. Look at this activity here. The board's right here. Reynolds with his jump shot. Good box out technique there. But Howard gets the board there, up and in with the left hand. And you know, uh, I think uh, Coach Fisher has made a slight adjustment in his 3-2 uh, zone half court here. He's got Howard out on the on the point of it, uh, Frank. He's pushing him out a little bit more, making him aware of where Brandon Cole is on the floor, cheating towards Brandon Cole. 6-4 junior Dana Parker. As a result, uh, the Daniel youngster, Jeff Daniel, has been left open for a couple of uh, bunny shots and he's knocked down. Tough break for the Lions with Charles White picking up his third foul. White scores 15 and a half a game with eight rebounds a game for the Lions. Now 54, Alcinder Turner replaces Parker. Turner brings a wide body to the court. A couple of wide bodies in there with, uh, with Turner and also with Derek Stewart. Look at the spread now. Peoria Central does this and does it well. Spread the floor, they look for some backdoor cuts. Oftentimes you'll see Reynolds take somebody one-on-one -on -one out of this. Just under five and a half to play at halftime. Lions with a one-point lead in the ball. I'd like to get Bloom to come out and play a man-to-man. -man. Well, Bloom's gonna have to come out and put some pressure on because they're down a little bit. Howard makes a move. Brandon Cole swiped it away from him with his quick hand. Lions lead on the board by four. And that could be extended before this ball game's over. Lob inside for Hughes. He's close in. Saison rebound, dumped it in, and he was fouled. Partney Saison. I don't think Saison saw it go down, but he, he threw it back up there. He flipped it in before Cole yeah. fouled him. Ball comes in on a lob to, uh, to Michael Hughes. Doesn't get it down, so zones underneath for the offensive board, and as he's being bumped, he just threw it over his head. Second foul on Brandon Cole there. Gives Saison the hoop. And the rebound out of bounds to the Trojans. That's a good call. Turner had inside position, but I think Hughes was over and knocked it out of the bounds. It's a three-point lion lead. And Bloom and White, who put together a streak at the end. This yeah, is Brandon Cole. And Reynolds hung him up as he went for a three. Fear to me that Brandon Cole wanted to tie it up on that possession right there. There's a good look at the Lion bench. <laughs> Chuck Fisher's <laughs> looking at a foul on a shot that was, what, 25 feet away, perhaps. But his kids are conditioned. The kid has hit about three of them tonight. Over there, uh, John Long, Bobby Darling, Mike Plunkett along with... Got a one-on-one one here. They get this after his, uh, I guess they said he wasn't shooting, he was passing. Up in the air, changed his mind from shooting to passing, and that's why it's a one-on-one. One. From out there, I'd be passing. Pull is shooting. Tyrone Howard's dishing it off. Mike Kirksey with a little pop from the right. Big transition basket for Peoria. Lions have their longest lead, it's five. Cole bounces into the front. In it goes to Turner. 
turns on Cezanne, steps in, swatted away. Cezanne got it. Reynolds on the fly. Reynolds, a 360. Cezanne, now Reynolds again. Yes. Reynolds, an incredible athlete. Got out on the break quickly, took it in, did the 360, missed the shot. Check the block. Turner takes it inside here, and there's just too tall timber in there for him. He's blocked out of there. Ball's kicked out quickly. There's the 360, Frank, by, uh, by Reynolds. Incredible. Watch him get the missed rebound here now, the missed shot. Rebound, take it up, get fouled. He just hangs in there, doesn't he? Chris Reynolds will play for Bobby Knight. He missed the free throw. And the rebound to Jeff Daniel. The Lions by 7, 4.20 to go in the first half. Frank Bassoni along with Jim Albrecht, Coach Mel Rustio at the Assembly Hall for the double-A quarterfinals. Earlier today, King and East St. Louis Lincoln went to the Final Four. We have a game coming up after this one, Rock Island and New Trier. Daniel goes to the baseline. Central got the hands on this one, too, and it's an important stop for Bloom if they can do it. Now they're starting to control the boards. Pure Central starting to control the boards. Hughes looked at a three-pointer. 345 to play. Reynolds controls. Lions run a motion. Chris or Mike Hughes for three. And that's what Mike Hughes we saw Tuesday night. And you know the incredible 89% shooting down here by Bloom in the first quarter. We didn't know what kind of offensive rebounds they rebounding they do because they were hitting all those shots. Now we're finding out. Now Daniel comes inside to the baseline. He's double teamed. Look at that central defense now. Oh, they're cranking it up a notch. They're putting some heat on now. The Lions on a run have a lead of 10 and defensive pressure. Fury Central can match Bloom's quickness, and yet they're a little bit taller than Bloom, which gives uh, Bloom's ball players a lot of trouble in the corners. There's your turnovers. Bloom with a half dozen now. Reynolds to Hughes. Brandon Pohl has the rebound. Looked like that was over on the top. Under three minutes in the first half. Bloom needs a score this time. Watch where Pohl is. Herbert goes all the way in. Daniels open. Got it. Just kind of getting the second shots, Frank. And I think that's what's, what's hurting Bloom. You know, they're, they're shooting the ball well, but uh, they're not getting any second or third shots when they, when they don't score. That's eight for the sophomore Daniel. Reynolds draws the pack to him and hands it to Cezanne. The charge there. Charging on Cartney Cezanne. He's just a bad choice. He should have pulled up and shot the ball or given it back to Reynolds coming down the middle. So the Trojans stand up and call timeout. 2.29 to go in the first half. It's Peoria Central in the lead, and we'll be back after this from one of your network sponsors, John Deere. This is March Madness, and tomorrow's the Final Four. At 11 in the morning, King and Lincoln in a real war, and then the winner of this one goes against New Trier or Rock Island. Tomorrow night, before the tip-off at 6 o'clock, the third place game at 6.35, and then the championship in AA for 1989. The Trojans down eight with the ball, 2.25 to go, and you can bet they'll go to Brandon Cole. Michael Cooper once said about Michael Jordan, as soon as he touches the ball, it's like an alarm goes off. It's the same with a guy like Cole. And when he gets that ball, everybody expects. There's the shot block. He's got it back. Now Central. Whoa! It goes to the Trojans. You're right, Frank. Brandon Cole looks to shoot, looks to score every time he touches the ball, yet he doesn't force his offense that much. And I, I know Coach Nardi wants him to have the ball and look for those threes. He has one of the quickest releases that you'll ever see. He's got a pretty release. Excellent shot. Pick up top for Herbert. There's Turner. Turner can post, but he can't do much with Michael Hughes inside. Hughes got his size advantage, swatted by Kirksey, but a foul. And Turner does post well. Of course, Hughes is letting him have the ball, taking the uh, position that uh, if he's going to go up, I'm going to knock it away. 
Peoria Central's got Charles White out of the game with three fouls, and the field goal percentage is down to 65, if you can say coming, down. Coming down to reality a little bit from 89 to 65. And of course, Peoria Central's shooting well. I'm sure they shoot about 54% on the year. That's just about it. Herbert nailed that. He had nine in the super sectional. Coming into the game, Charles Matthews, a six-foot senior, 25. Jeff Daniel goes out. Daniel had a good half. He took some of the pressure off of Brandon Cole. Hit a couple of, hit a couple of jumpers when Cole was really being doubled up and uh, a lot of attention being paid to him. Herbert shot two in. He shot two key ones in in the super sectional in that one-point win and got two there to get Bloom within six. 150 to go in the half. Let's see if Central spreads it out. Reynolds out of the point. Essentially a four corners shell. They'll try to break somebody off this. They use their quickness. Now Howard really handles the ball well for a big guy, doesn't he? Got the long arms, but he does get down on the dribble. Bloom puts a little more pressure outside. Herbert comes out. Now Cole out there too, and he's got those quick hands. Hughes in that left corner, and Alcindor Turner is giving him a lot of attention, trying to keep him from getting the ball. Your Central's in no hurry. They're gonna they're gonna keep running their four corner, try to break somebody loose. He gets down inside one minute. They may hold for the last one. Marks he penetrates, got all the way in and missed it, and Turner rebounds just under a minute. I don't think that's the shot Coach Fisher wanted. Cole loads up, backs up, and Reynolds strips him. Hughes. He'll shoot from there. Mike baseline. Give him some daylight, and if you can put it in the books. Silky shot for Hughes. He has 17 in the first half. So he's at home here in the big house. Herbert right and left against Kirksey. Now Reynolds and Cole. How'd you like to have that backcourt that's, pair? That's a lot of talent in that corner over there. And wow. Reynolds is frustrating Cole right now. He's ripped, he stripped him a couple of times, and Cole's complained to the officials about being fouled, hit on the arm. Uh, but I'll tell you what, there's quick hands by, uh, by Chris Reynolds, just super quick. One of the best defensive players in the state against one of the best offensive players in that matchup. Eight seconds now. Seven. They got the ball where they want it. That's Hughes with five. Mike shoots with four. Rebound to Bloom with two. They don't get it off. The end of the first half at the Assembly Hall. Peoria Central, 38, and Bloom, 30. And we'll be back after this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. In the last two years, the Peoria Central Lions record, 57-2. And this year it's 30 and 0, and they're trying to protect that here against the hot shooting Bloom Trojans. At halftime, they've done it by eight points. Frank Bassoni, along with Coach Mel Rustio, and Coach, your reaction to the first half? Well, incredible shooting by uh, uh, Brandon Cole in the first uh, quarter, and, and in particularly the entire Trojan ball club has allowed them to stay in the ball game. Uh, the concern I'd have if I was Coach Nardi is getting the offensive forward, just not getting the second and third shot. And of course, how do you defend Michael Hughes inside, outside? He's such a dominant ball player. You want to, uh, if you're Bloom, do you want to pressure Central here in the second half? Well, I think that uh, that's their game. I think they want to pressure him. I think they're, they're a little frustrated. Nardi was talking to the officials as he walked off the floor at halftime. A little frustrated that uh, he thinks his good boy, uh, Brandon Cole, is being raked a little bit. And uh, maybe he'll get a little few breaks on the on the calls the second half. You look for Cole to uh, use the three again? Well, I don't, I don't think he's going to change. He likes to put that three up. You know, uh, King and East St. Louis Lincoln have advanced. How do you like uh, Central or Bloom against either of them? Well, I think it'd be, a, you know, tomorrow afternoon you're going to have a great battle between King and East St. Louis Lincoln. Whichever one comes out of there, there's going to be a plenty of tests there for uh, for uh, a Peoria Central, for example. And that's the one we're projecting in the championship game. We'll look forward to the second half and then the next game. But right now, let's go to the court. It's Art Kimball. Well, thank you, fellas, for those projections. I, it sounds like election night here. We have a young fellow with us that almost 
Almost made it to the assembly hall. Greg Peden, the uh, head basketball coach of the Steel Men of Joliet Central. Greg, good to see you. Well, thank you very much. It's real nice to be here. Would much rather have been on the floor <laughs> playing, but uh, this is about as close we're going to get this year. You lost a one-pointer. Boy, they live with you, don't they? Yeah, they sure do. We had uh, five different possessions inside the last minute of the ball game. Uh, missed two front ends of one and ones in the last 30 seconds with chances to tie. So, uh, you know, we were right there, but that's kind of the way the ball bounces, they say. You can certainly sympathize with Scott Martins and Aurora. East this afternoon, losing that heartbreaker at the buzzer. Those, they're just tough to take, but it happens all the time in this game. Uh, that was a whale of a ball game, especially had to feel sorry for Scott because this is the second year in a row he's had a good ball club. They played quite well, but gotten beaten by a very good ball club. It's interesting, the familiar names are back this year, by and large. They made the super sectional, uh, Bloom and Joliet Central and Peoria Central, and of course, uh, the Chicago Powers and uh, East St. Louis Link is hardly a new name. They're here every year, it seems, but what about the Bloom effort in the first half of this ball game? Well, you know, I certainly was a little bit surprised from everything I had heard from Peoria Central. It sounded like they were just really kind of hands down going to be the favorite. Uh, Bloom is, is, does not play with a whole lot of size, yeah. but they uh, got a lot of quickness and they have real, real quick hands and uh, really worked very hard. And I, I don't know, I'm kind of surprised they're this close, but hopefully they'll stick in there. How did you defense Brandon Cole? Well, not very well, unfortunately. <laughs> he scored 35 against us. Uh, we tried a variety of things, either uh, covering him, tried to double-team him out of his zone, played some uh, gimmick defenses where he chased him. Uh, nothing really uh, worked real well. Uh, some of the other team, uh, other players, Alcindor Turner and the Daniel kid, both played pretty well against us and, and caused us some problems as well. In the end, we played mostly man-to-man, -man, and that's about what got us back into things. Greg, I think the art that is returning to basketball is the art of passing the ball. We've seen some brilliant ball movement, and particularly by Peoria Central in the second quarter. Uh, this Reynolds is a whale of a ball player. You can certainly understand why Bobby Knight is so interested in getting him in at Indiana, plays some great defense, and makes some great passes. Well, indeed he does, and the big guy can pass it. Hughes can pass it very well. Well, you know, Peoria Central puts a lot of very good athletes on the floor, and that's what everybody had said about them. It's easy to see why they're undefeated, and I think they've only had seven ball games that have even been decided by less than ten points. Well, obviously he had a good year this year, but is Joliet Central back? Well, we, we certainly hope so. Um, we have two starters that will return for us next year, one inside player, James Winters, and one perimeter player, Randy Tucker, who was our point guard. And we also have a sixth man, Frank Wallace, who can play inside for us. So we hope definitely that we'll have some other chances to get down here. Greg, thank you so much. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Nice visit with Greg Peden, the head basketball coach of the Steelmen of Joliet Central. And we'll be back following these messages. Peoria Central Lions holding the halftime lead. They haven't been beaten this year. Their closest game, a couple of overtime one-pointers over Peoria Manual. They beat Manual three times. They beat Springfield by two. They beat Morton by five. But other than that, everything's been ten points or more. And Coach Mel Rustio of Jacksonville knows that the, this team is, has had a, a great run. How differently have they played tonight than they played in the super sectional against you? Well, not that much differently, except uh, Sh uh, Chicago Heights Bloom has come out and played man-to-man, -man, uh, whereas we played more of a zone. Michael Hughes kicked out against our, uh, our zone defense and hurt us from outside. And the man-to-man -man si uh, situation against Bloom, you've seen Chris Reynolds penetrate uh, quite a bit, uh, take the ball to the cup and do some things and make things happen uh, with his great offensive skills. It's noticing that everybody that comes by is mentioning Cole's offense and uh, Chris Reynolds' defense here in that first half of play. Michael Hughes, however, for Central had a fine offensive half as well. well he's an incredible offensive ball player inside and outside. Michael Hughes can do it all. Mike Hughes has a lot of ability at six foot six. He's a wing player, a guard. This is Reynolds bringing it up. Reynolds bringing it up the floor. He's looking to penetrate in here. He's going to look for Hughes inside, and he finds a big guy down inside. Now Hughes takes a shoulder fake to the baseline, up and scores. That's an inside move. Let's take a look at the statistics for our halftime. Field goals. Bloom still at nearly 65 percent, and Brandon Cole lit it up outside. Yeah nine free throws. Central made only four of ten free throws. Bloom has four less rebounds than the Lions. Turnovers, three more for Bloom. Team fouls about equal. Shooting percentage of Bloom is still well, gaudy. That's the two biggest stats you got you, that jump out at you. Is their gaudy uh, field goal percent. They don't have the real strong inside game. The difference in shots. 31 yeah. shots for the Lions. 17 for Bloom. And as you pointed out, they it's hit the boards. nine of ten. And it's going to be the boards. Individually, Mike Hughes, the leading scorer for the Lions, with 17. He averages 21. Chris Reynolds with 11. He averages 14. No foul trouble there. 
Chris, uh, Charles White has three. Brandon Cole with 13. Jeff Daniel with eight. And Turner with six. We'll be back with the second half. Now let's take time out for this from the country companies. Proud sponsors of the IHSA telecast since 1972. We've talked a lot about great juniors in this tournament. Here's Bloom's Brandon Cole. He may be the best uh, outside shooter in the tournament. He certainly can rise on his jump shot as he does right here, Frank. Well, he has range and excellent release. We're set for the start of the second half, and we should say congratulations to Chicago Marshall Star Center 6-1 LaTanya Foster, named 1989 Ms. Basketball of Illinois and number one academically in a class of 226. LaTanya Foster. Good credentials. Shot by Central's White is not good to start the half. And the Lions lead by eight, and they have the ball. Now Charles White, 14, has had some big games with a 15-and-a-half point average. He's carrying three fouls. Trojans sink. Hughes adjusts in the air, shoots too long. Daniel rebounds and a foul early. He's tightened it up here on the officiating early in this uh, third quarter. I think he got a little ragged towards the end of the second quarter. Coach Nardi was uh, making some gestures as he walked by us going down to the dressing room, slapping his hand as if to say, let's get those. Yeah, he was frustrated that uh, Brandon Cole was getting raked so much, and, uh, and, and possibly he was. You have to almost tie a rope on Cole. <laughs> Derek Turner. Central's coming out in their man-to-man -man pressure now. Man-to-man -man half court defense. Turner comes to the high post for the ball. A little pop off the top. Daniel just beat his man to the right and scored. He didn't get any help on it, but he just he just flat out blew by him there. Jeff Daniel with 10 as he beat Charles White. And Bloom's within six points. Kirksey is not guarded. Howard, not much. He steps into the seam and hits it. At the time you think you can uh, sag off with somebody like Howard, they step up there 14 feet out and pop it. Bloom playing a little more patient now than they did to start the game. Cole flashes into the post. Got Reynolds off his feet and nailed it. Excellent move by Cole. And that's what he has to do against a bigger kid. Howard does the same thing on the other end and nails a left-hander. You know, that's frustrating for Bloom. You know, that by the time they dig in and come back within six, uh, Peoria Central answers immediately. That was a two-second basket. Herbert on the right, stolen by Howard. Howard tries to go all the way, does a little 360, layup. Big kid showed you some versatility and some, and some agility there. Eight for Howard, four out of four, shooting. And, and he's suddenly 10-point lead again. These good teams have such explosive ability. They can score points in a hurry. And when you got Brandon Cole, you're one of those teams. Alcindor Turner gives it to Cole. Cole is fouled. There's that there's hand. A, there's that hand. Uh, somebody listen to Frank at halftime. Not Frank Bassoni, but uh, Frank Nardini. <laughs> that quick hand and a quick one. Look here, here's Howard, the big kid on the kind of the uh, spin move, 360, and off the glass with his left hand. And that's quite a move for a big kid. We've got a customer seeing the little guards do that. Yeah, the little guards in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what Howard would be in the NBA, right? 6'6 six, six guard. Oh, with that sweet touch. Excellent release. You know, kids watching the tube and seeing uh, this young man's shot release. That's what you want. He just sticks his hand in the basket on his release. Before the super sectional, he had made 115 threes. So it's a eight-point game again for the Lions. A lot of time. We're early in the third quarter. Bloom looks man to man. Man to man. They switch defenses a lot. Here's a steal by Daniel. Nice play by the sophomore. Cole within three. With, with no rebounder underneath, he had that much confidence, and I'm sure his coach didn't mind it at all. Foul on Jeff Daniel as Reynolds comes to the front. We've got people shaking their heads all over the assembly hall at this guy. Well, Daniel's having trouble controlling the ball, and, uh, and all Brandon Cole wants him to do is just get it to him, and he did, and he stepped right in it. Shutter to think. Here, Daniels gives him the ball. He steps right into it. No rebounders underneath. Lets it fly, and bingo. He has 20 points. 
out of 39. Charles White here. White and Reynolds exchange. White's going to try. Turner rebounds. And the Trojans have it. Turner gives you everything he's got inside. He really positions well on Harson. That position is part strength, too. Yeah. I think you're going to, uh, Coach Fisher's going to have to get uh, Hughes posted up. Move inside by Jeff Daniel. He's got some quickness. Three on Chris Reynolds. There's the picture of Chris. Check out here on the baseline. Daniels drives the baseline. They claim that Reynolds moved up underneath. And there's the foul. And it's number three, and it's early in the second That's half right. for three fouls on a key performer like Reynolds. This is what Coach Fisher worries about more than anything, is getting Hughes or Reynolds in the foul trouble. Reynolds fouled out in the manual game in the sectional. And Central survives. Jeff Daniels done a nice job coming off the bench here in this ball game. Daniels got a bright future. He's only a sophomore. And he's going to team up with Cole next year. That'll be a load. Three-point game. Got into it here. Bloom within three. Now Reynolds walks it up. Howard's had a hot hand. White gets inside. Ball slapped away from him. Hughes goes for it, but the Trojans have it. This is Cole. He can pull up any time. Slips the ball between his legs a couple times. Stop and pop. Electric. Electric is right. The kid just, just put every move he could on to get shake the guy free, and he got free and scored. A one-point game as Brandon Cole has brought Bloom back. That'll intimidate anybody. Reynolds is fouled. I can understand why you would box and want him 18 times during the year. <laughs> Maybe double team him 18 times. You'd have to tie him up to a chair to stop him. As the, as the guy says, shake and bake. Here it is right here between the legs a couple times, three times. Now spin on the baseline, pull up on a dime and a little glider. And Hello. he stops before he charges. There's timeout on the court. We've got a dandy. Timeout from one of your network sponsors, John Deere. Four seventeen to go in the third quarter of this game, and Brandon Cole has put on some exhibition. He's brought his ball club back into the ball game, Frank. He was down. His club was down eight points at halftime. Peoria Central came out, went up as many as ten the second uh, in the third quarter, and Cole, with as you described, electrify electrifying offensive abilities, and uh, has just brought him right back in the ball game. Chris Reynolds missed a free throw for the Lions. Cole has such a confidence about him when he shoots the ball. Reynolds missed two. You don't see that often. And Cole comes down. He feels it. Herbert tries outside. Rebound Hughes. That one would have given Bloom the lead. Chris Reynolds nearly picked up his fourth foul. They're trying to pick up the charging foul. Charles White, who hasn't had his typical game, gives to Howard. They're Howard's. Gonna, they're going to give Howard that shot out there. They're double teaming Michael Hughes inside. And you know, Michael's been silent this third quarter, Frank. And it's Hughes silent with Howard five for five. Mm -hmm. 340 to go in the third. Cole, caught now by Howard. Coach Fisher switched off now to the 3-2 zone defense. He's got a couple kids in foul trouble. You're always aware of where Cole is on the court because of his, his just he's a, a threat everywhere. Herbert take the shot and move. Stewart is low on one side. Alcinder Turner at the high post. Now Blue being patient. A three-pointer could tie it. Cole inside. Turner for two. Shows you some other skills, some passing skills. Penetration on the baseline, dump back, bounce pass. Great assist. Now a one-point game. Mike Hughes had a hot shooting first half. His Saison nails one. 
surprised Bloom doesn't set more picks and special plays for Brandon Cole on the perimeter. He looks as if he can get a shot whenever he wants. And they expect him to get it. Two and a half. Third quarter. Game very tight. Stewart missed inside. Stewart is just intimidated in that situation. Chris Reynolds plays with three fouls. Howard punches it to White. The shot is short. Somebody get a hand on that ball. It was partially deflected. Daniel has the baseline open. Stays on, got the ball, and fouled him. Yeah, got him with his body. He certainly uh, certainly didn't uh, hit his arm or anything. Stays on, rose up and caught that ball. His third foul. We'll see it here on the baseline. Daniels drives the baseline. Sazon is right there, both hands up. Looks like he just traps the ball. Possibly gets him with the lower body. Well, he got off the floor there. Got to make the case for the officials once in a while, don't we? Jeff Daniel won't mind. He kid, puts it down. It shows a lot of poise for a sophomore. He averages nine points a game and 63% foul shooter. You can see he's going to be nothing but better. Perfect. One point Lion Gate lead. Right. You heard other coaches who have been in this situation, undefeated team, down at the Assembly Hall, state tournament play. Do you get a little tighter? There's a little bit more pressure on you in this situation? Oh, I think, sure. I think the obvious answer is yes. You bet. Howard comes all the way in, drops it down to Hughes. He wasn't ready. White's got it. Traveling. Okay, you know, Howard's trying to get the ball in Michael Hughes' hands. We, you, you know, we haven't heard you use Michael's name here for a while. He, he's kind of been silent and quiet out there. And of course, he's a big scorer. 21 a game at 17 and a half. 17 the first half. Has he scored this half? Look at this. Bloom, one down, spreads the court. Well, the officials are going to warn him here to, to uh, penetrate the, uh, the mid-court area, and they've just done that. But I'm sure they're happier to be in this situation. As we say, the pressure mounts on an undefeated number one ranked team in the state of Illinois. And uh, here they're playing against a team that they certainly mismatch in terms of size. So uh, I think Frank Nardi would be happy. A three by the premier three. Stewart swatted away by Saison. Turner's got it. He's inside. Stewart travel. walks. Got to travel. I think... Uh, I think Brandon Cole has the green light, a la Vince Coleman. <laughs> Shoot anytime you want, go anytime you want. Well, you know, Bloom's team, all they have to be is within three at any moment, and he can tie the game. They're within one now. Will Central run it down? White fires, yes. Charles White with two. There's Cole bouncing in the front court. You'd think they'd hold it down here for one shot inside 30 seconds. Cole with 32 points, 10 rebounds, and five threes in the super, including a clutch steal that helped the win. Central pack back in their 3-2 zone. Trying to keep an eye and talk to one another, tell them where Brandon Cole is. There's the clock, 12, third quarter. Lions by three. Will Cole shoot a three? Post Turner challenges Hughes, got it down. Tough move at the buzzer. Big basket for him. Al Cinder Turner knocked it in. It's a one point game after three. We'll be right back. Let's pause for these messages. We're at the World Council of Carmakers where Pontiac Bonneville excites the competition. We don't want public no Bonneville, 7,000 left and legend. 7,000? Maxima, 2,000 more? Well, people know Pontiac Bonneville is base sticker price. Who's it? $114,900. Plus, Pontiac Bonneville is longer, wider than Maxima or Legend. More car. For less yen. Compare Bonneville now with $500 cash back or 4.9% financing at your Central Illinois Pontiac Performers. Hall, the state tournament quarterfinals. 
It's a one-pointer. Now Cinder Turner catches at the high post here, puts a pump fake on and takes in and plays big. Another pump fake up and in and a big basket to conclude the third quarter because it brings the Bloom Trojans back within one. And they start the final period with the ball. Third quarter shooting. The Lions got two less shots, shot two-thirds of them in. Bloom still at 55. And of course, that's a, you know that's been there. They've been shooting well all evening. Now they shoot for the lead. Cole fakes and goes against Reynolds. Ball out of bounds in the 3-2 zone that uh, the Peoria Central likes to, to use. The wing people are opening up, looking to find out where Brandon Cole is on the baseline, trying to trap him. They want him to give, get rid of the ball. There's Turner inside. He hit the two at the buzzer. Cole wants the ball. Not a lot of kids call for that ball at this level. He did. He's got it and fires. Hartney Saison has the rebound. Lions protecting a one-point advantage. They won 30 just out of 30. Sag back. They're going to they're gonna dare Howard to shoot that shot. Chris Reynolds is free for a stop and pop that does not go. Bloom's got another chance to take over the lead. Well, they've got to get they've got to get some offensive boards once in a while. They just can't hit on the outside all the time. Daniels outside with Herbert. They spread the floor a little bit. Look for a place for Cole to pop free. But Cole's been working the baseline quite a bit this uh, second half, Frank. Now, now he's popping out the front. Seven minutes to play in this third quarterfinal game. Lions 50, Bloom 49. Turner's got a free one. It's going to go off to the left. Rebound to White. Two times Bloom is shot and missed going for the lead. Who will score first in the fourth? Howard sticks it into White, running one-hander. White's a very good offensive ball player, and he's been uh, probably the silent man on this ball club. Maybe he hasn't gotten the publicity he deserves. Seven points for White. Cole whips the ball inside to Stewart. Nice move. Middle's wide open because the wings are spread out so much trying to concentrate on Brandon Cole. The high post area is open. Again, it's a one-pointer as Reynolds answers. Peoria Central sets in their 3-2. They spread it out, trying to cover the wing areas. And it leaves the high post area open. 13 for Reynolds. Lions by three. Cole against Howard. Daniel loves the baseline. He got it down. Step on the end line. No goal, out of bounds. How often he goes to this baseline. And he's on the line right, right here. There. No question. Good call. Good shot. Reynolds works the front court. Lions look inside. Bloom has kept the ball out of Mike Hughes' hands much of the second half. That's Hughes there. White. Off the window. Missed. Rebound loose. Turner. Howard's got it for the Lions. Three on two. Howard all the way. Reynolds rebounds and missed. Stewart. There's a big difference in the ball game too, Frank. Peoria Central gets a lot of re offensive boards. Herbert's inside, got it. They have missed a the charge there at the free throw line, folks. The Lions by one. Bloom's gone back to their triangle and two defense. What they that's what the defense they started in early. Then they went to a straight man, but now you can see Cole's at the top of the triangle. They're daring Howard to shoot the ball. And they're giving it to White. White fires and misses. Howard rebounds and foul. It's on Tyrone Howard. The triangle two defense, they're just daring uh, White and Howard to shoot the ball. He might be able to get by with daring Howard a little bit, but not White. Chuck Fisher's been through a few of these. He had to play manual without Chris Reynolds. He lost him in a OT for fouls. And he's still hanging on to that perfect record. Coaching is an easy job. Oh, indeed. I look at Chuck Fisher there, and of course, you know, anybody would envy him coming down here with an undefeated team rated the first in the state. But as a, we went head-to-head uh, -head the other night, the super sectional, 
Uh, I asked him about the, he could have done without the number one rating. He, he agreed to that. He said, yeah, we didn't need that at this particular time. Undefeated pressure is enough. The Lions lead 54-53. 4.35 to play. Everybody wants a piece of you in this situation. Again, the Lions in their four corners. White, and it gets away from Howard. The turnover lets Bloom shoot again to take advantage of this lead. Bloom was here in 73 and 74 in the title games. West Mason's team. And it goes to Turner at the baseline. Oh, the lead. Al Cinder Turner gives Bloom the lead by one. That's 12 for Turner. Fisher wants a timeout here. Peoria Central calls time. Bloom has taken the lead. 4.06 to play. Now this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producer. Up, up top, coach. Up on top, you see uh, Cole with the ball. They're going to try to pick for him in two different plays, trying to free him up. There's a first pick. Here's a second pick. They're looking for the three. He fakes, draws the defender up, bounce pass inside the Stewart. Back out to uh, Turner. Alcindor Turner then nails it from 15 feet. And all because the attention Brandon Cole got from Peoria Central. All right, we're down to four minutes to play. In the third quarter final, the field goal percentages are there. You see Bloom staying hot. Well. Howard tries and short. Rebound inside Hughes twice. Foul on Hughes. Six six Mike Hughes from Central. He hasn't touched the ball much this half. I know that uh, was. A little redundant there, but he hasn't had his hand on the ball much. And he's a big factor in Peoria's offense. Well, I think he's the key offensive ball player. Uh, Chris Reynolds sets the table, as they say, but certainly Michael Hughes is the one that does most of the scoring. You saw Frank Nardi leaning back. He had a team that was 14 and 10 entering tournaments. They're 19 and 10 and leading the unbeaten Central Lions. Chuck Fisher. has 3.46 to come back. Right. An eternity left in the ball game. A lot of time. And Peoria Central can't start feeling pressure in this situation. They've been in too many big games. Herbert. It's a two-point game. He's got to get the ball into Michael Hughes' hands. He's got he's to get in the offense. And now they've kicked him out at the wing, you'll notice. When crunch time comes, oftentimes it's the key performers. Reynolds pass. A set play, a lob that uh, went awry. And Herbert's got a layup. The set play on a dunk to, to White. And uh, the, the uh, pass hit the rim. Ended up for a bucket for Bloom. White's made a bundle of those. He faked. Oh, Cole jumped over him. White got it down. Count it. Cole <laughs> jumped over him. Yes, he did. He leapfrogged him. And the youngster was standing up when he did it. Check it out here. Cole is drawn off his feet and jumps over White so that he doesn't foul him. This is sheer athletic skill and talent. There's the fake. There's the jump. He clears him. I don't know about that call, folks. I don't know about that call. He's got a block there. And Charles White at the free throw line now. And get the Lions within one. The Lions have not shot free throws well. Now Cole. 3.05 to play. Peoria Central's now in their man, uh, straight man defense. They got to put some heat on, and they know it. Oh, they got one. Got a break there. White got his hand on the ball, and it went off Herbert out of bounds. You got three minutes left in your season and you're down two you got to pull the plugs out and let it all rip here the clock and the score white wing left Hughes tries to break out of the pack wants to come to the ball white shoots too long Turner rebound in that triangle and two they're getting excellent position on the uh, defensive board and Bloom calls timeout 240 to play in the game Bloom in the lead we'll be back let's pause for these messages now, 
One of these teams will go to the Final Four with King and East St. Louis Lincoln. Bloom is in the lead. They call timeout. What do you suppose well, you for? Know, Coach Nardi, I think, is going to probably spread the floor, eat a little bit of the clock up, but you have to be careful here, Frank, that you don't get too cautious with the ball. You still, there's too much time to, uh, left in this ball game to try to just freeze it. On the boards, the Lions by three. 2.30 to play on the scoreboard. Bloom by two. Cole fires and missed. Brandon went uh, one on the world there and uh, didn't get it to go. I, I wouldn't think Nardi wants to do that. I think he'd want to eat some time up before you attack. The last unbeaten double-A champion, Quincy, 1981, 33-0. Central is trying. They're down, trying to come back against Bloom. Michael Hughes has to touch the ball, folks. Howard fires it down. Tyrone Howard, a big game. The game is tied under two minutes. It's a grinder. Got two great ball games back to back here, fellas. At the buzzer, Lincoln won it. Earlier, Herbert on the move. They've got the floor spread. Oh, a steal. It's Cartney Saison with a big steal. And the Lions get the hammer back. Big steal. Coach Fisher wants him to run their offense. He wants him to spread the floor a little bit and run it here. Defense brought the Lions here. Will it keep them here? Charles White to Howard. Saison is tripped up almost down there. He was a little shaky with that ball. Important to be patient. White. White answers. Charles White and Central's hit four straight as White has 11. Now a return to Brandon Cole. Clock comes toward a minute. What a game. Cole, a three. Boom. They answer. Bloom by one. Fellas got ice in his veins. What a spectacular shooter. He has 25. Timeout central. 45 seconds to play in a one-pointer. Now this from the country companies, proud sponsors of the IHSA telecast since 1972. Frank Nardi says, as long as we have coal, we're alive. Right. And of course, Peoria Central puts great man-to-man -man pressure on here. They step out in here and make the steal. Good, good defense. Now, here's the three-pointer that puts Bloom back in the lead by one. And I tell you what, folks, that's a gutsy shot by a talented shooter. 58% for Bloom in the second half. Central has two more shots, 52%. 40 seconds to play. Bloom by one. Charles White steps up. In the, in the triangle in two. Howard got free. He's open. Go! Tyrone Howard. Central by one. 14 for Howard. Perhaps his best game. He'll try to find Cole here. Open somewhere. A whistle out of bounds for the Trojans. As Reynolds and Cole. Oh. Looks like Reynolds got smacked in the contact. Reynolds is holding his mouth, as you can see. His teammates look at him, and so does the official. Reynolds went after the ball with Brandon Cole. And they collided on the sideline. I think Reynolds is going to be all right. Empty pass being made right here. The ball's touched. Both ball players going for it. Could have made a case for uh, for Reynolds going on a foul there. I think he got a heel maybe in this. There's the great yeah. shot of it. Look yeah. at the head hit the floor. Hit the floor. Might have split a lip or something. We can't tell. He's holding his hand over his mouth. He lost it, lost part of a tooth. There, there we got the tooth right here. Since the coach has got his for tooth. For heaven's sake. They're going to call timeout. There's Central calls timeout. 19 seconds left. We'll come right back. It's a one-point Lion lead. Right after this, from one of your network sponsors, John Deere. Chris Reynolds is back on the floor, and he's minus at least part of a tooth or teeth in the front. But he's there with 19 seconds. The Lions with a one-point lead, but the Trojans have the ball. And you know who they're going to try to get the ball to in this situation. That's 23. Word is that two teeth. Man-to-man -man pressure by Central here. Again, diving into the bench, Chris Reynolds. 
Uh, he doesn't worry about losing two teeth. He, he's worried about losing one basketball game. 19 seconds. Tremendous heat being put on by Central. Herbert with it. Herbert goes against White. All the way. He missed the layup. Rebound. Important. Possession arrow is key. Central. Peoria Central. There's the arrow. Timeout Bloom. The Lions have the ball because of that arrow and a one-point lead. The crowd. Your IHSA Network sponsors, John Deere, the Illinois Pork Producers, and Country Companies are proud to be part of this telecast tonight. They hope you're enjoying our coverage. And don't forget, we'll be on the air tomorrow morning at 11 with the semifinals tomorrow night at 6 for the consolation and championship game. We'll take a look here. The timeouts remaining, a key factor, one each. Well, it's a key factor. I think that uh, possibly uh, URA Central is going to, going to have to get a free throw or two down to win this ball game because Bloom obviously is going to put some pressure on and foul immediately because uh, they, that, that's their last hope in, in this situation. I don't know that that's who they wanted to shoot the ball, although there was a driving lane there for the youngster who took the shot. But uh, again, we make a case for the offensive board. Maybe we'll take a look at that last turn here for the Trojans on offense. Here comes Herbert. Yeah, Herbert's coming around. He drives all the way. Doesn't get the doesn't get the ball to fall for him. And here's the offensive effort, the offensive rebound effort, and the jump, the uh, tie-up, jump ball that results in the uh, alternating possession arrow being in the favor of Peoria Central. I think you got a foul right away. Look for a home run toss here on somebody releasing the way they're lined up. They might go for it. Charles White will throw they it might in. I have Michael Hughes taken off or somebody. Ten seconds to go. Lions by one. Hughes. It's White. Seven seconds. White is fouled. With six seconds. White's a pretty good free throw shooter, is he not, Frank? He's 65% on the season. And this is a character check. It's really something. The pressure has been remarkable. The foul is on 22. Jeff Daniel. We're not in the bonus. Not, We're in, not the in the bonus. bonus. It's the fourth foul on Daniel. And now Bloom is going to stop play with their final timeout. And they're still not in the bonus. This is when it hurts you, fellas. You're not in the bonus situation. You can't stop the clock soon enough. It's going to run out of time. Okay, now what? what is Frank Nardi strategy now? Well, I think, you know, there's a couple ways you look at it. You hopefully, you maybe you get a man-to-man -man situation, probably pick up a charge from somebody. That would be one approach. The other thing is you got to tell the kids to get close enough that whoever catches, you've got to foul immediately right now. There can't be a bit of second lapse. Uh, you got to get them into a bonus situation where you can get possession of the ball again. You okay. can't steal it. You can't get the charge. You got to get the uh, the uh, free throw situation. All right, let's look the other way. What's Peoria's strategy now? They have one timeout left. Well, Chuck Chuck doesn't need any more points. He doesn't. All he needs to do is get six ticks of the clock. If he can get that, his undefeated uh, season is intact, and he's still in the hunt for the state title. Uh, what he wants to do is get the ball in bounds and uh, try to stay away from the defender. He doesn't. He doesn't even. Uh, want to be fouled. He doesn't want this clock to stop. Six seconds left. At the end of the first quarter, it was tied. The Lions led by eight at the half. They led by one after three. They still have a one-point lead as Chuck Fisher sends them on the court to the throw thing, the ball in. The thing you don't want to do is design something here where you throw the ball away and then give it back to Bloom at that spot without any time elapsing. They line up. Inbounds, it comes to Howard. Howard is fouled. Four seconds, so the Trojans got played two, well. Got two ticks off. Now they're in the bonus. Tyrone Howard, 64% free throw shooter, has had a very good game for Central. Okay, gets two down. You still got a, you still got a chance with it with Brandon Cole, who has a great three-point shooter. And the Lions spend their last time out with four seconds to go. Now that's an interesting thing because some people talk about freezing a foul shooter and call it the other way. Here's the guy that's leading and shooting a one and bonus. Well, I, I think the big thing here is they, they want to talk about their, their defense. They've got a lead. Uh, they, they've got a lead. They've got the ball. They're shooting a free throw. If he, if he gets one of them, uh, two of them, 
uh, they still have to decide how they want to defend Brandon Cole. And I'm sure that's why Chuck Fisher called the timeout is to say, hey, look, fellas, locate 23 on the floor. He can beat us in this situation. This game and the one before it, a tribute to Illinois high school basketball once again. Two dandies back to back. King won easily against Thornridge, but then East St. Louis Lincoln at the buzzer took out East Aurora 72 to 70. And now the Lions there with a one point lead and a perfect record. And Chuck Fisher calls timeout before Tyrone Howard steps to the free throw line with one and one. Boy, I give the Trojans much credit. Oh, super, uh, super effort. You know, this ball club, uh, as we talked off the air, came into this uh, state series playoffs, uh, 14 and 10. Uh, Jim mentioned that they were seventh in an eight-team league. Uh, they, they carried their league colors very well this evening and still got a crack at it. And talk about courage of these kids. Chris Reynolds out there, loses a tooth or two, and he's still right there on the floor. Trying to decide. You see right now, they're located 23. They've got White and Reynolds zeroing in on Brandon Cole. Tyrone Howard. Two seconds. One second. Ball loose. Central wins. Brandon Cole was looking for a spot to get another, uh, to launch another one, but just couldn't do it this time. He was stripped of the basketball, and Peoria Central saves it right here. A draining 62 to 61 victory for the Lions is their 31st in a row. And Bloom, with a gallant effort, ends their season 19 and 11. What a game. Outstanding effort by Chicago Heights uh, Bloom. You know, they did. Look at the up. picture. Yeah. <laughs> well, a little pressure's off. At least you're in the iron now. You're in the trophy round, you know. And, uh, of course, it would be so, uh, so terribly to, terrible to have an undefeated number one ranked team coming into the state tournament and you lose in the first round. At least uh, Chuck Fisher and his uh, Central Lions are going to go home with a trophy now. There's our cameras in the aisle of the dressing room as the Lions come down. A sparkling shooting performance by Brandon Cole. Almost single-handedly brought Bloom from that 10-point disadvantage and pulled the Trojans up into the lead. But the Lions were able to answer and pull out an important victory, a victory that gets them into the Final Four. You hate to see Brandon Cole out of this tournament. I can watch him. <laughs> shoot. Wouldn't you just like to watch him play night after night? I mean, what a great young man. And he is exciting. He is going to make Bloom a threat every time they take the court next year. And I'll tell you, Jeff Daniel, the sophomore who's back, had a fine game for them also. They used uh, a small lineup to big advantage. If they, if they have a bona fide big man, Frank, a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, oh. kid, uh, boy, are they a ton. I'll tell you, they've got a 6'4", freshman that's 15 years old. And, uh, you know, you can envision him being 6'7", or 8". And here's what's happened so far in the quarterfinals as King and Lincoln and now Peoria Central have advanced. Dutrier and Rock Island coming up. A couple of familiar names across the state of Illinois as Mel Sheets, Dutrier and Duncan Reed from Rock Island. Now we're ready to have the band from Belleville East entertain us. Robert Kohlmeyer directs. Here they are. but this is great we're having a ball and we're going to try our best tell us something about your group how many people do you have here we have uh, 39 students actually we have 40 with us today and uh, all instruments that you find in our regular marching band are represented and the kids are doing a great job we're just having a ball with uh, now what is it you folks are doing with the cheerleaders from both ball clubs over here well, uh, before the a, game we have a cheer we call the funky chicken i see which okay. is a story in itself but to make a long story short we get their fans and their cheerleaders involved with okay. how funky is your chicken how loose is your tooth come on all you whatever fans yep, shake your yep. caboose and we get them jiving around and it's a lot of fun they at first they think what is this and then after a while they they get into it they really enjoy it well it's great you got both teams involved that way yeah yeah that, that, that way we don't show any favoritism and everyone has a great time you enjoyed the competition obviously to be selected to come down here we love coming up here both to play for the crowd and also to see some great basketball and we and we we have both 
Well, the only thing you like better is that Bell the least down here with you. Well, we wish we could have him here, but uh, maybe next year. When did you leave to arrive in Champaign? Well, we left about 7 o'clock this morning from Belleville and arrived here about 10.30, which gave us time to get set up, warm up, and clean up, and get ready to go. Well, I got a kick out of you this morning. You had a little trouble getting the flutes to sit down. But <laughs> once you got that under control, you're okay. Well, I guess I got a little excited seeing all these athletes running around. I don't know. Bob, uh, I, think, I think we're going to need a tune from you. Okay. Have a, have a little do something. Well, let's just hang on for just a second. I think they still want us to chat a little bit. Let me ask you, uh, how does this vary from, say, a concert band at Belleville East? How many youngsters do you have involved in that? Well, our regular concert band, we have 96 musicians, and we have about 140 in our marching okay. band. So from those musicians, these uh, young uh, ladies and gentlemen you see behind us apply for this band and then are selected. And they love this, don't they? Oh, they love it. They love it. We, we have the same group that plays at all of our games back at Belleville East, and then we host the regional tournament at our school. Well, it's a great group, Bob. Why don't you play something for us? Okay, all right, Okay, you. nice talking with you. More information on that in just a moment. combined 205 and 35 85 plus percent victories and three are left we'll have the fourth coming up in just a few moments as rock island and new trier come onto the floor but we just saw a second whale of a game 62 to 61 peoria central over chicago heights bloom coach mel rustio your final comments on the first yeah. frank you can't ask for any better high school basketball played by outstanding athletes well coached and exciting finishes uh, for fans i mean uh, Certainly uh, quite a quite a display of talent and a good show. Skill level continues to ex improve every year. The coaching keeps getting better. It's just amazing. We're all set to look at the final numbers on our quarterfinal game. And Bloom shot 59 plus percent. The Lions 53. Look at the free throws. Peoria course, high. The, the difference is the number of attempts. Uh, Peoria Central got uh, quite a few more shots, some 16 more than, than did Bloom. And uh, again, that goes to the offensive boards, I'm sure. And they escaped a 4 for 14 free throw shooting percentage. They won in rebounds, even in team fouls. There's your final stats of this one. Now we're set to go to courtside. And our friend Art Kimball has a guest. Thank you, Frank. Boy, have we reached out this time. We've gone all the way to the snowy coast of Maine to grab Rudy Keeling with us. And, of course, Rudy, very familiar to Illinois fans, had a club here with Peoria Bergen. And gosh, it wasn't that many years ago, was it, Rudy? Uh, it was nine years ago. And, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like it was very many years ago. I don't think I've missed coming down here uh, at all since that time. 
Well, I, I mentioned Maine. A lot of people may have lost track of Rudy. He was an assistant at Bradley University for several years. Now he's the head coach of the Maine Ball Club. And basketball on the prep level is a little different out there, isn't it? It is. You know, we don't have a kid who could have played on either one of those those teams that's a prep player in, in Maine. You know, so I come here because I've got to find some good players and find some kids who can compete on the level that we want to compete on. I suppose the enthusiasm is something you really learn to appreciate when you go to a state that perhaps is not oriented toward any given sport. Yeah, you know, they like their sports. Yeah. They just have not learned to concentrate on one sport and, and become very good at it. You know, we've got hockey there and baseball has been very good there, uh, but they're not into, you know, being great basketball players or hockey players or football players. They just like to play and more than anything, they like the winter outdoor sports. I thought I might see you in the giant slalom or something. I, I thought they'd make you a skiing champion out there. <laughs> I tell you what, my wife is taking up skiing, and, and she's uh, she enjoys it, and the kids enjoy it. And it, it, it really is beautiful country out there, so we're, we're happy to be there. How did you come out the first year? I know you're under 500, but you're trying to structure a program. Yeah, we, we did a little better than than uh, they did the year before. We were 12 and 16, and you know we were really happy with, with the way the kids played. And we've got an opportunity to bring in a lot of kids. We're going to bring in seven new kids this year. So, you know, in effect, we'll have all of our kids in in two years, and I think you'll see a big turnaround. You're in what, Yankee Conference? We're in the North Atlantic Conference, yeah. the Measles Conference. You know, that, that's right. The league really couldn't play it. That's right. It hurt Sienna, and he did it. That's right. And, and <laughs> Sienna did a great job yesterday, so we're real proud of him. Rudy, what about this first ball game? You've known Chuck Fisher as long as you've been coaching, and uh, certainly Frank Nardi. Turned out to be a great ball game on paper. I think Central was a little heavier favorite than that, but you don't play them on paper, do you? No, you don't, and, and I think that uh, the Bloom kids ro rose to the occasion. They were uh, a, kid, a team that was overmatched on paper. They came out and played hard, and, and their star played like a star, and they, they took Hughes and, and Reynolds out of the game in the second half, and that's why the game was so close. I think Brandon Cole fired in three from downtown Peoria, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he shot it from wherever he wanted, and most of them went in. He's a very fine player. Well, indeed he is. Rudy, it's great to see you, and uh, certainly good luck to you. The main program, you know, is pretty well known for baseball. They have a great program. You like to get that basketball program up to the same level. Yeah, and I think that's what they want us to do. The, you know, the administration has gotten behind us, and they've uh, made a big commitment. We play a, a pretty good schedule, and uh, we're going to be out in the Midwest quite a bit and play, and when, next year we're going to play Northern and Eastern and DePaul, so we're real happy with the commitment, and we think we're going to be a very competitive team. Rudy, always good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you. Rudy Keeley, the head coach of the Maine University Ball Club, and now let's take time out for this from one of your network sponsors of today's telecast. This telecast is being brought to you by the Illinois Pork Producers Association. The 10,000 pork producers in Illinois encourage you to try the new lean, nutritious pork, the other white meat. The country companies and their more than 900 agents throughout Illinois. You've got the country behind you. And John Deere and your local John Deere dealer. Coach Mel Sheets of the Nutrier Trevians, congratulations on your wonderful year. Well, thank you very much. Kids worked hard and you earned your way. Tell us about your season and how it culminated in the trip to the Elite Eight. Well, uh, we felt like we were going to have a pretty good squad, and, and at Christmas we finished second in the Proviso West Tournament, and we, we played very competitive down there. We played good ball clubs, and uh, as we looked at our schedule, we felt that, that if we could play well, the rest